So let's take a look at how we configure a summary in OSPF. There's actually two different ways that you can do it, and it, it, it can get a little confusing if you're not used to it. It's really something you got to lab out a few times and take a look at. It's not really that bad once you get used to it, but if you're new to it, it sometimes it can, it can throw you for a loop. OSPF, remember, is based on LSA types. It's the whole end game, the whole goal, again, as I've mentioned, is to build the, the link state database, the LSDB. That's our whole goal in life when it comes to OSPF. And so everything is not going to be based on route. It's going to be based on LSA. And based on LSAs, obviously, you have the different route types, right? Like, so when I, when I send in LSA type 1s, the routers, I'm going to say O routes, right? When I send in type 3s, which are the summaries, I'm going to see OIA routes, right? When I send in type 5s, I'm going to see the external routes. When I send in type 7s, I'm going to see the NSSA routes. So you have to visualize everything in OSPF as either a route type or an LSA and, and, and how they correspond together. In other words, how they're related, right? So you can't just look at the route type. You can't just look at the LSA. You have to look at both and understand how they're married together. Once you understand that, then you, then you can, can come a little bit closer to understanding how, how and where we do summaries. So how do summaries work? Summaries are based on route type or based on the LSA type that you're going to have. I'll say route type because it's probably going to be easier for you guys to understand. So, so when we go and we do an, um, an OSPF summary, there's two different ways. We have an area range command. Now, in here is going to be the area uh, ID. So the area ID and then range. Okay. Now this area here is going to be where that, where that summary is going to originate from. Okay. So if I have here, if I have area zero, Okay, and I want to send in a summary. Let's say that off of router one, I have this 192. In fact, this is what we'll probably do. I have this 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network, and I, I or maybe I have multiple slash 32s. And actually, what I have, I have uh, dot one, dot two, and dot three, and these are all slash 32s. So let's say I want to send in uh, a single slash 24. Where do I do that from? Well, I have to do it because I have this area range command, it's going to be based on the area. In other words, what area am I going to advertise this summary from? And that's the key word. Where am I going to advertise this from? And so this actually is going to come from the ABR or the area border router. Because what I'm doing is I'm saying, where do I want to summarize this prefix from? What area is it going to come from? Well, it's going to come from area zero and it's going to go this way into other areas. And so the ABRs, which would be these guys, are going to be the ones that are designated to actually send in this particular summary. So I have OSPF already running on these devices. We're probably going to tear it down, but let's just let's just see what we got. Let's see, do show run section router OSPF. I think we were just playing around with passive interface. Uh, yes, so let's let me just go ahead and tear this down. So we'll actually just say no, router OSPF123. We'll do the same thing on router 2 and we'll rebuild. No router OSPF123. And no router OSPF123. Do show run interface E01. Good. So these guys should stay as point to points. Do show run interface E00. Good. So let's say router OSPF1, router ID 1.1.1. Let's say network 10.1.2.1, 000. We're going to put this guy in area 0. 10.1.3.1, 000. Let me just copy and paste. Let's make our lives easy. Uh, let's go to 2. And we'll say uh, conf t. Actually, you know what we're going to do here as well? We'll say network 192.168.1.0000.255 area 0. Because what I want to do is I want to actually advertise in, do show IP interface brief e assign. I do want to advertise in uh, these three loopbacks here. So, uh, But I, but I want to send them in as O routes, right? I want them to come in as type 1 LSAs, the router LSAs. I don't want them to come in as summary LSAs or external LSAs in different areas, right? Again, you have to view everything in OSPF as LSAs. I, I had an instructor once. I'm not going to call him out by name. Uh, but I had an instructor, uh, still a good friend of mine. And, and you know, he, he would always preach, know your control plane. Know your control plane. Once you understand the control plane, everything else will fall into place. You have to understand your OSPF LSA type. And he would say that as well. Once you understand the LSA types, I, I promise you everything falls into place. It's, it's crazy. I denied that for the longest time. Once I finally learned it, it was like, bing, all those light bulbs went off and everything was happy. 
I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. Let me go back to this. So let's say um, router OSPF1, router ID 2.2.2, and we're going to say network 10.1.2.2.000. This guy's going to go into area 0. And we're going to need another area. So let's go ahead and enable 10.1.4.2.000. Let's go ahead and say area one. We'll go ahead and put this link here between two and four in area one. And let's leave it at that. And let's hit up uh, router four. So we'll just do this. Actually, you know what? Let me let me erase the screen here and we'll redo this just a little bit. So we'll say this here will be area zero. We'll keep it simple. So we'll say area zero. And we'll say this is going to be area one. Okay, and we'll see where we can send in those summaries from. Now remember, we have two commands, and I only showed you one so far. So we have the area with the area ID, followed by the range, and then the, the subnet that we want to actually advertise. So that's one command. I'm going to put us in a scenario that forces us to use the other one. Conf T, uh, we'll say interface E01. Actually, we got to do that over here. Interface E01, IP, OSPF network, point to point. Router 4. Uh, IPOSPF network point to point. Don't even know what that says. IPOSPF network point to point. Router OSPF one. Uh, router ID four dot four dot four. Network ten dot two dot four dot four zero zero zero. Area one. Okay. Let's wait for for everything to come up and be kosher and happy and hunky dory. Uh, I think we have an adjacency here. So let's go over to router four. Uh, router one. Do show IP uh, OSPF neighbor. Do show IP route. OSPF, we should have the network good. So we have an OIA route. This is 10.2.4.0, which is the network here that's coming in between uh, router 2 and 4. Let's go to router 4, though, and let's say do show IP route OSPF, and we should, in theory, see the three routes coming in from router 1. Now, I want to summarize these, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over router 1 for a second. I'm going to say area. Where is this originating from? Well, it's originating from area 0. Now, you can see that I can use the area ID in decimal if I want to, right? So I can say either just 0 or I can use the IP address format of the area ID, which would be 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 you can do either one. Most people, most normal humans, just say area 0. There are some unicorns out there that, that see everything in matrix code, and for some reason they feel compelled to use the, uh, the IP address format, the dotted decimal, that whatever makes you happy. So we're going to say uh, area 0 question mark and I'm going to use the range. So I'm going to say range and then I'm going to put in the IP that I want to essentially match. What do I want to summarize? I'm going to say 192.168.1.0 and it's going to ask me for the mask. Notice that this is not the reverse mask, this is the actual mask. So I'm going to say 2550. Now let's see what happens here. I'm going to say do show run section router OSPF. So there's my, where is it? There it is. There's my range command, right? Let's go over to router 4 and let's say do show IP route OSPF. Am I summarizing these routes? Negative. Let's check router 2. Let's say do show IP route OSPF. Am I summarizing these routes? Negative. Again, remember that the end game, the goal here, is to build the link state database. I am going to advertise these routes from one area to another area, right? Hence the command area range, right? So I'm advertising this summary out of an area. How do I get these routes out of an area? Well, the only way that I get them out of the area is by the ABR. The ABR is the guy that sends these guys out of the area. So this area range command has to be done on the ABR. If I do it on router one, which is the originator of the routes, it doesn't help me. It does me no good. So I need to go over to, and I'm going to copy this exact command. I need to go over to the ABR. I need to say router OSPF1, and I'm going to pop this command in. And when I say area 0 range, what it's saying is that out of area 0, there is going to come a range of addresses, 192.168.1.0 slash 24, right? So now let's go over to router 4, and I'm going to say do show IP route OSPF. And now you can see that we're actually summarizing these routes. And it was pretty simple, right? Not, not the end of the world, not a big deal. So once we do this, now we're actually going to summarize these routes. But now I have another issue. I'm going to head over to router 1, and I'm actually going to remove this network command here. Okay? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say redistribute connected. Now in theory, in theory, it's going to be the same exact set of addresses that are going to get sent in, with the exception of, actually, yeah, we, we should see the same addresses. Let me just light up router 3 here for a second. Router OSPF1, router ID 3.3.3, .3 .3 .3, network 10.1.3.3. .3 .3. 
The only reason I say that is because I see a, a network statement for it over on Router 3, and I want to make sure that essentially we're, we're advertising in the same thing. I did not see that I know of. Oh, we did see it. Good. So essentially here on Router 4, in theory, we're advertising the same set of prefixes, right? The only addition here should be uh, Router 1's loopback 0. So let's go back to 1, and we'll say do show IP interface brief E assigned. You can see that we have the loopback zero. That was not being advertised before because we didn't have a network statement for it, right? So we had 10.1.2.0, 10.1.3.0, and then we had the summary address that was coming in from router two. I should say the area range, right? So here's the summary. Now, I'm going to say do show IP route, OSPF, and now look what happened. I didn't change this, the area range. If I go over to router two and I say do show run section router OSPF, that still exists. It's still there, right? So the problem is, is that OSPF has how many commands? It has two. Remember? It has two commands to do a summary. One is area range. The other, and I've already alluded to it, I already mentioned it because my brain just was, or was there, which was summary address. Now here's the thing. The summary address is going to correspond to external route types. So this is going to be your E1s and your E2s. Okay, so your area range command, this is going to be for your OIA routes. Okay, this is going to be for your external type 2s. Now, what did I do on router 1? I did redistribute connected, right? I don't even know how to spell redistribution. Redist connected, right? The minute I did that, what did router 1 become? Router 1 became an autonomous system border router or an ASBR because now he has routes coming in from an external source. It doesn't matter that those routes are locally connected. It doesn't matter that there's no other routing protocol like yeah, GRP or RIP or ISIS or who cares. It doesn't matter that there's no other protocol. It matters that the minute I say redistribute anything, this guy has now become an ASBR, an autonomous system border router, and he's going to be sending in what kind of LSAs? He's going to be sending in the type 5s, and the type 4s, which means that now, in order for me to summarize that, I need to now use a totally different command. And this is, again, where it gets a little bit confusing, because it's not about, it's not about the, the, the prefixes themselves. It's not about, I guess it is kind of about who originates them, but it's really all about the LSAs. That's really what it's about, guys. It's about what kind of LSA is it, and depending on what kind of LSA it is, that dictates what kind of summary command I'm actually going to use to summarize that. When I am in ASBR, the summary address has to summarize those commands. Well, let me, let me back up because I said that a little bit backwards. When you have external routes, meaning type 5s, and type 4s. The ASBR is who is going to perform the summary. So now if I want to summarize these prefixes, router 1 has to do it. Okay? If these are OIA routes, right, meaning if these are uh, type 3s, when I, when I enter in that area, so if I want to summarize these routes into area 0 or into area 2, right, if I had area 2 down here, right, when I want to summarize those into another area, they are going to be in that area as what kind of routes? OIA routes, right? And so I need to do this at the ABR. So this is really, this is kind of how OSPF is a little bit confusing, right? But again, once you, once you learn it, once you're there, you're fine. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's flop this so that we can summarize these routes because we want a summary over on router 4. So let's head over to router 1. Do show run section router OSPF, and let me go into my process, and I'm going to say summary address, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize the address I want, 192.168.1.0. Notice it's going to ask me if I can enter the right key. It's going to ask me the summary mask. I'm going to say 255.255.255.0. Do show run section router OSPF. There's my summary address command. Let's go and check router 4. Let's actually check router 2. Let's check 2. Do show IP route OSPF. Notice that even router 2 now, even though they're in the same area, notice how he has a, summaries, uh, a summarized address for the 192.168.1.0. Why? Because they're externals. They're external type 2 routes. And this would, could be external type 1s. It doesn't matter. Point is, is that they're type 5 LSAs. So because they're type 5 LSAs, the ASBR is going to summarize them. As he sends out that LSA, he's going to summarize that prefix. And so when we head over to router 4, do show IP route OSPF, we now have a summary for OSPF. So again, area range, summary address. The area range, let me actually clean this up a bit here. Let me erase this. So remember, just one last time, because I know it gets confusing. That's why I'm beating a dead horse, for lack of a better term. The area range 
is going to be for OIA routes and is going to be done by the ABR, the Autonomous System Border Router. Now the ID that goes in here, the ID equals the origin. In other words, what area did that route come from? So if it came from area zero, it's going to be area zero range. If you want to summarize that, so here's area one, for example, and you want to summarize that route going in this direction, it would be area one range. It's the originating area where that route comes from. Okay. Now, the summary address command, so I'm just going to say summary address, is for your externals, so your E1s and E2s, and this is to be done by your AS. BR and there's no you know there's no area range there's no you don't have to specify the area or anything it's just going to be the summary address uh, you know followed by the subnet you want to actually summarize so these are your two different summarization commands in OSPF lab it play with it and understand it have a good day.